Dr. Z's Health Education Project. This is Dr. Zadie here, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about retinal vein occlusions. So what is a retinal vein occlusion? Well first let's look at the words. We have retinal, which is the layer in the back of the eye, vein, which are blood vessels responsible for draining blood out of an organ or tissue, and then occlusion, which is blockage. So basically a retinal vein occlusion is a blockage of a vein that's responsible for draining blood out of the retina. Why do we care about retinal vein occlusions? Well, retinal vein occlusions are one of the most common retinal diseases affecting about 1 million Americans. So it is something that is out there and a lot of patients have to deal with retinal vein occlusions. And what is a retinal vein occlusion? Well, let me see if I can try to explain that. If I take this picture of an eye, and I'm gonna see if I can pull this off, but I'm gonna rotate this picture like so, and I'll make that more obvious why I'm flipping this eye kind of sort of upside down like that. If we take this eye here and review some basic structures here. So this is the front of the eye here. This is called the cornea. This structure here is called the lens. Then we have the retina, and then we have back here the optic nerve. So maybe I'll label this as retina, and we'll call this tube that exits the back of the eye optic nerve. So if you look carefully here, you can see these blue and red lines emanating from the inside of the optic nerve. And what these are is this is these are the arteries and the veins that supply blood to the retina and take blood out of the retina. So blood is going to come into this central retinal artery. It's going to branch out into all these little tiny branches that supply blood to the retina. And then these blue lines represent the veins that drain blood out of the retina. And if you see all the blood that's fed into the retina has to drain out through these veins in this direction down the central retinal vein. So this central pipe is what's responsible for draining all of the blood out of the retina. Maybe we'll call this central retinal vein. So this is the main vein responsible for draining blood out of the retina. And these tiny little branches, we'll call these branch retinal veins. And there's lots and lots and dozens of little branch retinal veins that all feed into one central retinal vein. So now let's suppose for a moment that a clot forms in this central retinal vein and all of the blood that's trying to drain out gets backed up. It's got nowhere to go. This is a similar situation to the drainage in your bathtub. If that gets clogged, the water in your bathtub has nowhere to go and it spills out onto the bathroom floor. Well, what happens when a clot forms in the central retinal vein and the blood gets backed up, well, it's got nowhere to go. So unfortunately, it spills out all over the retina and you get bleeding all throughout the retina. All over the place, you get all this bleeding, all this hemorrhage inside of the retina because the blood had nowhere to go. So this can be thought of like a stroke to the eye. If you develop a blood clot in a blood vessel that feeds blood to the brain and a portion of the brain doesn't get good blood flow and you get bleeding in the brain, we call that a stroke. Similarly, if you get a clot in the, one of the veins that drains the blood out of the eye, we call that a stroke of the eye or the fancy term is a retinal vein occlusion. So you can get a central retinal vein occlusion if you get a clot down in this main central retinal vein or you can get a branch retinal vein. If you get a, an occlusion of just one of these tiny branches, then you're only going to get blood and swelling in a small uh, quadrant of the retina, not the entire retina. So branch retinal veins tend to be less severe than occlusions of the central retinal vein. Now, the blood, as you might imagine, and all of the swelling associated with that blood 
tends to blur the vision. So central retinal veins tend to cause blurry vision. And just like with strokes, you can have mild strokes and you can have massive strokes. Similarly, with retinal vein occlusions, you can have mild retinal vein occlusions, just perhaps of a branch or just a small area of the retina. And patients with small branch retinal vein occlusions may not even know that they have one. Their vision may be perfectly normal. On the other extreme, you might have a central retinal vein occlusion with bleeding and swelling all over the retina and might have significant uh, visual impairment and even lead to blindness. So who, why do retinal uh, vein occlusions happen and who gets them? So let's talk about the risk factors for retinal vein occlusion. So we know that one million Americans suffer from retinal vein occlusions, but who exactly is at risk? So the risk factors for retinal vein occlusions have to do with those factors which affect your blood vessels. So high blood pressure. That is going to be probably the biggest risk factor for a retinal vein occlusion. High blood pressure, the official term for that is hyper tension. So those patients with high blood pressure, just like high blood pressure puts you at risk for heart attacks and strokes, it puts you at risk for a retinal vein occlusion. And if you've had a retinal vein occlusion, it puts you at risk for additional retinal vein occlusions. And the other big risk factor is diabetes. Diabetes is a disease that affects the blood vessels in your body. So you might imagine that if you're diabetic, you might have damaged blood vessels and you might be at risk for a retinal vein occlusion. The other risk factor is related to uh, your eye itself, and that is glaucoma. Patients who have glaucoma, which is a disease of the optic nerve, which is this uh, cable that exits the back of the eye in which the retinal vein actually uh, resides, patients with glaucoma are also at risk for a retinal vein occlusion. Now, there are some other risk factors as well, like any risk factor that would affect your blood vessels, again, like smoking, uh, high cholesterol, uh, and then sleep apnea is emerging as a possible risk factor for sleep uh, for retinal vein occlusion. So these are all factors that if you have them and you're interested in lowering your risk for a retinal vein occlusion, you want to try to limit those risk factors. Control your blood pressure, control diabetes. If you have glaucoma, get treated for that. So hopefully this video gives you a better idea of what is a retinal vein occlusion and what are the risk factors for retinal vein occlusions. In my next video, I'll talk about the treatment of retinal vein occlusions.